So I'm going to have to use my book a little bit. I don't like using it. Um, to start off with, historically, we're going to go way back in time. So this is 4-4. Four, four. Another history lesson. Partial history lesson. Um, oldest recorded history. The Egyptians. <coughs> Egyptians. Now the Egyptians, how do they write? Pictures. Um, hieroglyphics. So the Egyptians had a symbol for one, ten, a hundred, uh, a thousand, uh, ten thousand. 100,000, and a million. Now, just like any other large government institution like the Egyptian Empire, they collected taxes. And to collect taxes, you'd have to write down things, how much money you got from one town, how much money you got from the big city, and so forth and so on. They also were trying to keep track of um, populations, which, of course, included the slave population. They wanted to know how many slaves they had to build their nice little pyramids. Um, so they had to be able to count and be able to record it for future reference. So the symbol for one in Egyptian happens to be almost identical to our one. Almost identical. Uh, ten actually looks like an intersection sign. A uh, hundred... I call it a swirly. I do mine counterclockwise. If you do yours clockwise, that's fine, as long as it's a swirly. Uh, a thousand, if I remember right, is the lotus? Lotus plant. I try to draw it like a little plant. I don't know. You don't have to be perfect with it, as long as it looks like something. Whether you draw it like the book, or my way, or anything else, it doesn't matter. Um, Ten thousand is the weird one. What is it? It's a pointing finger. Mine always looks like a hot dog. I don't know. It's just some picture. Don't worry about it. It's hyper hieroglyphics. Um, a hundred thousand is which way is it facing? The tadpole. I don't like their tadpole personally. I like drawing it this way because most textbooks do draw it this way. It's a fish, but you can draw a tadpole too. It doesn't matter. I like the fish though. And then there's a historical connotation to the fish. We'll come back to a million. I draw it as I just won a million dollars. Woohoo! Celebration. <laughs> I won a million dollars. Now, um, the fish actually has a nice little historical connotation. You ever seen the little fish on the back of the car that says Jesus inside of it? Yeah. Why does the fish re represent Christianity? Okay, what are you all? Christians. Why does the fish represent Christianity? Most people go back to the story of the loaves and the fish. That's not it. The beginning of the church was during what era? The Christian church. Catholics, basically. When did they start? Well, after Christ died, right? And, and, and they celebrated, and what empire was around at the time? Roman. Roman, all right. So the Romans have this new religion starting up, and guess what they tried to do to it? They killed everybody that was a Christian. They were against having a religion in their empire that was not the Roman gods. You know, I forget which ones the Roman gods are. I always say the Greek ones when I mean the Roman ones. But they were, um, the Romans said, your religion is ours. And then these Christians started up, and they tried to kill them all. So if you were a Christian in the beginning, Catholic, um, and you wanted to celebrate Mass, by the way, they never had buildings in the beginning. That was a Roman institution later on. Uh, the first church was on hills, fields, out in the open, so they could see the sky and you know enjoy things. To have a Mass, though, they couldn't have a specific location. They had to move it from place to place, otherwise the Romans would cut off all their heads or put them in jail. So what they would do is they'd put a fish symbol on the ground to represent where they were going to meet. 
And the Romans would look at it and go, oh, they're just writing some Egyptian number on the ground for some reason, or Egyptian symbol. And they would ignore it, but the Catholics understood that that little fish on the ground meant that's where church was going to be held that Sunday. Okay. History. Well, Gotta love it. Um, <sighs> and then, of course, the Romans eventually switched over and made Christianity their official religion. And, uh, I don't know, they went crazy with structure. Okay. So if you're going to write an Egyptian number, it's going to look something like this. Let's do a couple fishes, or tadpoles, a couple fingers, oh. uh, a couple swirlies. You can see why the Egyptian numeral system really is not that good. Lots of drawing. Um, a couple of these and a couple of these. Oh, yeah. okay. Now, are those fingers? I mean, is that the, the 10,000 sign? Yeah. What else would it be? That's what I always ask. If that's a symbol and it doesn't look exactly what you're looking for, what is the closest one? Closest one. Yeah, I mean, that's how all words work. I mean, you see. This on a typewriter, this always confused me, and this on paper, but they both represent the letter A. Because that's the only thing close enough to it. Okay, so how do I read this number? Well, you do it one place at a time. You take these three and you say, what are they equal to? Each of them is 100,000, so if you have three of them, this becomes 300,000. And you write it down. Then you go to the little um, hot dogs. And how many of those do we have? Five, and they both represent 10,000, so that would be 50,000. And then you get to the swirlies. Swirlies are 100, and how many of them are there? So that would be 500. And then there's two intersection signs, 20. And then there's what? Seven sticks. Seven. And then add those numbers together. The reason I suggest that you do this is because I've seen people write this as Three, five, five, two, seven. And they would get the wrong answer because then the numbers would be not in the right place values. This is 350,527. There's actually a zero, a missing place value. In Egyptian, you don't see the missing place value because they don't have a symbol for zero. They don't need one because they're an additive system. So this is considered an additive system. Because all you have to do is add the numbers up, and you get your answer. Going backwards is the same thing. If I started off with 350,527, I would break it up into each place value and write out the correct number of symbols for each one. So if it was 300,000, I would write three fish and be done with it. So it's actually easy going backwards and for Egyptian. I don't want to spend too much time on that. The one I do want to spend a little time on is the next one. The Roman numeral system you were taught in, oh, I guess, fourth grade, somewhere around there. Um, and some of you learned it incorrectly, so I've got to fix a few things. Uh, the first thing I need to fix, this is five. Yes? I, I taught you that at the very beginning of this. This is how it's written nowadays. But the Greeks didn't write this, they wrote... Just the plain old five. If you put a bar on the top, it means 5,000. The reason that there's bars on the top and the bottom of a Roman numeral actually came about in the 18th, 17th century when they were making clocks. For some reason, they didn't like the old Roman numerals, so they put lines on the top and the bottom. It balances the clock out or something silly like that. So do not put lines on the top and the bottom. Keep the letters individual. All right, so the Roman numerals, they had a symbol for one, five, 10, 50, um, 100, 500, and 1,000. Now you got to think for a second. The Egyptians could write in the millions, and they needed to. They, were, they had a few million people in their country, so they would collect taxes in the millions. So having a symbol for a million actually makes sense. The largest number the Romans can write is 3,000. The Roman Empire was much bigger 
then the Egyptian Empire. So why would it make sense to only have the largest number available, 3,000? And there's a reason that it's only 3,000. Well, 3,999 would be the largest number that they could write. So let's go through the, the possibilities with Roman. The Roman symbol for one, again, looks like our normal one. Most cultures have that as a wheats or something like that. Five, ten, um, fifty is L. C, D, M. And there are no lines on the top and there are no lines in the bottom. Just straight up letters. Now there are a couple rules. This is somewhat of an additive system like the uh, Egyptian. So if you have a oops, large, small progression, you know, it just starts off really large and works its way down. All you have to do is add. add. You would take all their place values and just add them together. So for instance, I can write M, M, um, D, C, C, L, X, um, V, I, I, I. Those are supposed to be I's, not L's. All right, so this would be a large to small progression because it starts with the thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones, and every symbol after the next one is either equal to it or smaller or smaller. So all you have to do here is add, but I highly suggest you break it up this way. Here's the thousands, here's the hundreds, here's the tens, and here's the ones. Ooh. The fives. Tens, stop here. And then the ones. Okay. So, how many thousands do I have? Two, two. two, so you write two thousand. How many hundreds do I have? Seven. Seven, because that's five, six, seven. How many uh, tens? Six. It's fifty plus ten is sixty. And then the ones would be five plus three ones, which is? Eight. Eight. So our number here is two thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight. How do you know what it was? No, that's what I want. Oh. No. What's M? A thousand. A thousand. What's M? A thousand. That has to be your thousand. What's D? What's the second word? Hundred. <laughs> that's why. That's why. All right. So that's the first rule. Second rule. Uh, two. No more than three symbols in a row. This is why I say 3,000 is the largest number you can write, because the largest progression of M's that you can put in a row are M, M, M. There's no such thing as M, 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 because that doesn't follow the rule. So you can't have more than three symbols. That includes every symbol up here. You can't have four ones in a row. It doesn't make sense. You can only have three. It's a maximum number. Um, you'll find that the 5, the 50, and the 500 only get used once. You can't even have two of them in a row. Because if you go VV, what's VV? Ten. That's 10. I already have a symbol for that, so that's pointless. But X's can be three in a row. Maximum, you can't have four. C's, same thing, three in a row. You can't have four. All of them have to be this way. All right, and that leads us to rule number three. If you can't have more than three symbols in a row, how do you write something bigger than 30? Subtract. We're going to use subtraction. So up here, the progression is... Large, small. If you have a small, large, I'm going to call it a group, then you're going to subtract or place value. So if you have a, a in the tens, you have a large, small progression, or a small, large progression, you're going to take the two numbers and subtract them. Uh, for instance, if you have an X in front of a C, the first symbol is 10, the second symbol is 100. So that means it's going in the wrong direction. You're going small, large. So you flip them and subtract them. So that's 100 minus 10, which is 90. So that'll give us our 90. What if I write IV? Or what's better than that? Um, CM. What's CM? Um, That's 100,000, so that makes it 900, because it's 1,000 minus 100. 
Now, this small large group has to be in place value. In other words, this 1 cannot go in front of this L. That makes no sense because it's too far away. There's a logical place. So the only thing that can go in front of an M is a C. Why can't I put D in front of that? You want it. Well, what's DM equal to? D. Oh, D. It's equal to D, so why do it? The only thing that can go in front of D is C. Yeah. So basically, it's called one logical progression to the left is the only symbol you can use. So what can go in front of C? A. X. Because putting L in front of it is useless. Because yeah. so that just brings you back to L. What can go in front of L? X. Oh, what? You can only go one to the left, the one that works to the left. So D can go to C, I'm sorry, M can go to C and D can go to C. But that's the only ones that can have C in front of it, because now we're going to go smaller than C. The only thing in front of C is X. And then when you get to the L, the only thing that can go in front of it is the one to the left, which is X. What can go in front of X? Uh, one. The one. The one. And then you move over, what can go in front of five? The 1. That's it. So the 1 can only go in front of the 5 or the 10. The 10 can only go in front of the 50 or the 100. The 100 can go only in front of the uh, 500 or the 1,000. That's it. Those are the only ones you can do. So to write 999, you do not write IM. Because that makes absolutely no sense. They're too far apart. They're too far apart. Um, well, how do you write 999? Ah, that's a good question. Let's write 999. So, for example, 999. Example, let's take 999, 999, and convert it into Roman. I didn't want to do conversions yet, but hey, why not? <laughs> the best way to do conversions is break it up. 900, 90, and 9. Because you can only write Roman numerals as a place value type system. How do you write 900? CM. CM. How do you write 90? XC. XC. How do you write 9? IX. IX. So the whole number becomes CM, XC, IX. That's 999. Isn't that cool? Anybody seen... Um, they should have put that one or that I in front of M. But you can't. That's what I'm saying. The only symbols that go in front of M are C. That's it. You only get one symbol in front of it. You can't use any of them. You have to use C. The only symbol that goes in front of D is C. You're stuck with it. The only symbol that goes in front of C is X. L, X. Um, the only symbol that goes in front of X are B and I. Oh, I'm sorry, B and I. Just I. And the only thing that goes in front of V is I. That's it. We write it uh, like that, but we multiply, I mean, subtract it. You know, we have to flip it. So. Well, if you have to write 900, you can't have nine symbols in a row. So, yeah, you have to subtract it. doesn't make any sense. Uh, how about this? Yeah, because I know 900 is bigger than 500. Yeah, so it would be 1,000 minus 100. Okay. And 100 minus 10. And 10 minus 1. But it seems like if you do it that way, it would have been written differently. Yeah. I know you got to subtract. You have, that's the only way to write it. That's what I'm saying. With the Roman numeral system, yeah, that you could use the rules and break them and come up with different ways of writing the same number. But in the Roman system, there's only one way. There's only one way. So, for example, um, what's this? I highly suggest you break it apart into thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. Thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. So where's my thousands? M, M. Why not this one? Because it goes small, large. So here's your thousands. Where's my hundreds? CM. Where's my tens? LXX and my ones? IX. If you break it apart this way, Roman is actually kind of easy. So, 
This is 2,000. This is 900. The next one is? 70, because that's 50 plus 20, which is 70. And the last one is? 9. So this is 2,979 as a Roman numeral. Simple. How about if we go the other direction? Um, 1,984. Uh, 1984. Good book. Made no, made no sense. And I want to convert this into Roman. Highly suggest you do the same breakup. You need to write 1,000 plus 900 plus 80 plus 4. If you expand it out, you usually won't make mistakes. This is a, a nice expansion of the number. How do you write 1,000? M. So you write M. How do you write 900? CM. CM. How do you write 80? LXX. X, is that legal? Yeah, yeah because you can have three in a row, you can't have four. four. Three in a row is fine. How do I write four? I, B. So this would be the Roman numeral for 1984. Remember movies, they always had dates that were like this? Always, you'd look at it and go, oh, shoot. Because <laughs> it's harder to read because it takes a little bit of time to convert it over. Never understood why they did that. Instead of just writing the number and being done with it. All right, so that's Roman. That's easy. Oh, oh, there is the one part that gets a little weird. How do they write big numbers? They don't. They just don't. They don't write big numbers. <laughs> you know what to do. You notice I'm ignoring you, right? How to write larger than 3,999. There has to be a way because the Roman Empire was... Huge. I mean, it took up all the Mediterranean countries, went into the Middle East, went up to Germany, France, England. Um, don't know how far it went in Africa, but it came down pretty far. At least the coastline of Egypt and whatnot. So, how to write larger than 3,999? Well, the way they did it is you would write a 5, or per se, you wanted to write a 5, and you would put a line on top of it. That line would represent times a thousand. So this is actually five thousand. So you put that line on top, and the line actually means multiply whatever's underneath it by a <coughs> thousand. So if I did um, this, what would that equal? Nine thousand. So they can write pretty large numbers. For instance, if you write this. What is that? A thousand, a thousand. a thousand times a thousand, and what's a thousand thousands? Ten thousand. A hundred thousand. I don't know. A million. A thousand thousands is a million. If you make a thousand dollars a year and you live for a thousand years, you will be a millionaire. Mm. Guess what? It's not going to happen. <laughs> You're not going to live for a thousand years. So we can start writing numbers, for example, that look like this. Um, and you need to break it apart. The best way to break it apart is deal with the bar thing all by itself. Whatever it is, just deal with it by itself. So what is XII with a bar on top of it? 12,000. 12, so this is 12,000, whatever it is, it's gonna be 12,000, plus, now we need the rest of it. Where's my hundreds? CD. CD, because uh, this took care of my thousands. CD, LXX is the tens, and VII, once. CD represents? 
Four hundred, because it's five hundred minus a hundred, plus LXX seventy. 70. VII seven. seven. So this is twelve thousand four hundred and seventy-seven. <clears throat> Does anybody remember um, the Disney movie Hercules? Yes. And the little kids are stuck under the rock, and they're like, "Someone call IXII or um, what was it? IXII, yeah, IXII." And when I saw the movie, I'm like, what the heck are they saying? But if you think about it, I-X-I-I. <laughs> 911. -1 Someone call I-X-I-I. So it was funny for those people that actually knew what the heck they were talking about. So once I figured it out, I'm like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> it's like when you get one of those jokes later on. Oh, I get it now. All right. Um, next up is a little bit backwards in time, actually. Uh, Greek. <laughs> Do we want to do Greek? No, Chinese. No, that's, that's the first one. Nah, Chinese is easy. Chinese has a symbol for one, ten. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But then they have a ten and a hundred and a thousand. I looked up online. They also have a symbol for ten thousand and a million. But they skipped over. They got two one hundred. Uh, thousand, thousand, thousand. They skipped over a hundred thousand. I don't know why. So it goes ten, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a million for symbols, and, and they skipped over a hundred thousand. I guess if you have a hundred thousand people, you might as well talk about it in the millions. All right, there's a symbol for one. Now you have to remember the Japanese did not write, do not write left to right. They write up and down. So when they change their one, they write it this way. But technically, it's the same as our one. It's just because of the way they write. Two is two. Three is three of them. Four is, let's see if I remember, it's a window with curtains. That's the way I think about it, windows with curtains. Five I showed you at the beginning of this. It's an H with a top and a bottom. Stick H with a top and a bottom. Six is a stick figure-ish type thing. Looks like, you know, head, arms, legs. Seven is a lazy T. That's what I call a lazy T. Like <coughs> Eight is supposed to be a mountain. I don't care which side you put the mountain on, but it's supposed to look like a mountain. You know, make it jagged on one side and smooth on the other. I don't care which side you do it on. Let's see, nine is, looks like five without the top and the bottom. You know what's really sad? I've memorized this. I usually have to look at a piece of paper, and now I'm like, oh, shoot, I have it in my head. Ten looks like a plus sign. A hundred looks like a dynamite box. Remember um, Roadrunner? Yeah. It looks like that dynamite box that he was always pushing down on. And a thousand is the ten symbol with a little hat. A little hat. <sighs> now, again, Chinese write their numbers vertically. So, for example, they would write something like, oh, this. Excuse me. <laughs> they would write a number like this. The top number, just like the Mayans, is the biggest number, and it works its way down to the ones. The best thing to do here is, again, break it apart into thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. So where is my thousands going to come from? Top. It's just the top one? The top two. The top two. What they do is they do what's called multiplication. This is the symbol for seven. <coughs> this is the symbol for the thousand, so it's seven times a thousand or seven thousands. So the top one becomes seven thousand. So you're taking two symbols at a time and multiplying them together to get your answer. The next two symbols is a window and a plus sign. Window represents four. The this is forty because this is the symbol for ten. Chinese had to tell you what place they were in, and they tell you your place value. When you get down to the bottom, there's no pair. So he's all by himself. He's just eight. So this becomes 7,048. And this easy. No. 
How about this one? I want to convert oh, 6,532. 6,532. The best way to do it, of course, is to break it up into 6,530 and 2. I mean, that's how the Chinese write it, vertically. And then I would start at the bottom to get confident. How do you write 2? Two? two lines. So here's 2. How would I write 30? How many symbols will it take? Three. Three in a place like Two. Every yeah. Chinese symbol is 2 except for the 1's place. So how do I write three tens? A three ones and a plus sign. So there's thirty. What? This is three times ten. Three times ten. This is a multiplicative system. So when you convert in it, you know, okay. I don't write three tens. That's Egyptian okay. and Roman and all that. This is a multiplicative system. How do I write five hundred? Well, the first symbol I write is the five. How do I write 100? The dynamite. The dynamite. dynamite box. So there's 500. And 6,000? My 6. And then my plus sign with a hat on it. So there's 6,532. Ta-da! Chinese. What do most people do with Chinese? Nothing. They write it like Egyptian. Yes, I have to, because oh, okay. I don't expect you to memorize them. Okay. I'll give you the Egyptian ones, the Roman ones, the Chinese ones, uh, and the next ones. <coughs> okay. Which is? Greek. Greek. Now, you need your book for this one, because there's way too many symbols. The Greeks have an alphanumeric way of writing things. That's easy. <laughs> Rovar, Greek. 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 What? Greek has a lot of symbols. So, for instance, if I write uh, this, I gotta be careful. Uh, this and this, this represents a number. The Greeks, again, break up into thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. So, when you see a symbol like this, this one cannot represent the tens. Even though there's a symbol that looks like that in the tens, it's not that. This is Sampi, not Pi. This is Vau, I think it's Vau, and this is Epsilon. So what's Sampi equal to in Greek? 900. Vau? It's got to be tens, can't be ones. Oh, I'm sorry, nu, nu. 50. That's nu, it's 50. This is Epsilon? 5. So this is 955. So each letter has its own position, it can't float. So you're not going to have two ones here. So if you have a ones, then the next one is either a ten or a hundred. If you have a hundred here, the next one is a ten. Uh, I'm sorry, a ten. The next one is a hundred or a thousand. We'll talk about thousands in a second. Um, if I write something like this, remember the um, Greek Empire was not as big as the Roman Empire, but they still had to write some large numbers. So if they wrote this. What do you think that little dash means? No, this little apostrophe. What do you think it means? Well, this is the ones. This is the tens. This is the. This must be. So that little dash must mean times a thousand. Times a thousand. Just like the Romans with that line on top was times a thousand. The Greeks put a little dash. So delta can be anywhere on that paper, but whatever it is, you have to multiply it by a thousand. So delta represents four. four so this is four thousand. Phi phi fo fum here is phi. It's in the hundreds position, so don't look anywhere else except in the hundreds. So this is five hundred. This is lambda thirty, and that's theta nine. So this is 4,500 and, and that's all there is to read.